core values are really important. We have 11 and the people we hire and how they communicate day to day, their responsiveness, how they treat others, how they treat our trades and our clients. Like they have to believe in that. So like our number one is like be a good steward of our client's investment. We're building high end luxury homes. It's really easy for things to get sideways. We have to protect our client, right? We have to embrace continuing education. We have to embrace technology. Uh, so all these things come down and we all believe, believe in it. And so my core principles, I share with them in addition to like generosity precedes prosperity. And, you know, it goes back to that when you're having failure in your life, you keep your head up, yeah. right? And when you have success, you keep your head down. And so it's really easy when you're successful to let that get to you, but it should never. You got to keep your head down and keep finding different avenues, right? Hey guys, before we get started on this next episode, we want to stop and thank you for helping us become one of the top five real estate related podcasts in Arizona. Please remember to like and smash that subscribe button. This is The Real Deal, where real estate meets real life. Whether you're a seasoned real estate expert, a first time home buyer, or if you're simply passionate about hearing small business stories, this is the podcast for you. Join us as we dive deep into the world of real estate and beyond. Well, welcome to The Real Deal. I am your host, Janine Igliani, with my co-host, Ryan Hatcher. What's up, guys? And our guest today is Brad with A Finer Touch Construction. Right. Got that right? You okay, got it right. AFT. A -A -F -T. Um, we're super excited because you're kind of a cool dude from what I've heard. So I think this will be a really <laughs> interesting conversation. I'm excited to dig deep into what you do and how you became who you are and all of that stuff. So thanks for being with us. Yeah, I think thanks to Ryan for inviting me on. Great to meet you, Janine. And uh, sure. yeah, learn everything I know from Ryan. So awesome. Appreciate well, it. Well, like I said, we like to start off and kind of hear about who you are, where you grew up and how you came to be where you are today. So hey, tell wait, us. Wait, before you get into that, I got to say how we met. Yeah. Okay? So 10 years ago, my family and I moved here and immediately I started playing basketball. And so I met him at, at church ball and we became friends pretty quickly, uh, mostly because he is a good dude. Um, but he's also for somebody who didn't play high school basketball yeah. can actually shoot the ball extremely well. And what I love most about him though, is he's a smack talking machine. <laughs> and so we have had a lot of fun, but quick story. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite stories about him is we noticed we, we gave him a lot of crap because he would come to ball and he was, he was always color coordinated, mm -hmm. like with, with light colors. This was before it became cool to wear like teal and peach and all that stuff. <laughs> and, and finally one day he tells us that his wife laid out his basketball shoes and his clothes <laughs> yeah. for him because he's colorblind. Oh. And so we just thought that was the funniest thing <laughs> ever because he was so color coordinated every day. But anyway. It's a true story, and it's funny because most people know me, and he's a pretty nice guy, but like when you get on the court, Ryan oh, knows same. he's super I'm nice. The, I'm the same way. Right? He's a big trash talker, so <laughs> I mean, you have to hold your own out you there, so, it, or right? else you get pushed around. That's just, but, it's like life. But it's that competitive drive that helps yeah. us be successful in business, too. Right. So anyway, That's give, fun. give us your, your background. Uh, yeah, so I essentially, I mean, AFT construction is how most people know us, you know, through our Instagram and like social media channels, uh, but a finer touch construction is our true name. We, we, we started in 2013. So 11 years now that we've been in business, which is actually March, you know, we're, you know, we just hit our 11 year anniversary, which is pretty exciting. That's the same as us. Same yeah. as me, really. March yeah. of uh, 2013. Good time. How good fun. time to start, right? Well, we were kind time. of plagued by the recession and the for housing sure. crisis for and sure. kind of some PTSD from that. But uh, I, I grew up in the industry. So like I grew up in San Diego. My, my grandfather retired from the Navy, started, you know, when he was retired, started an electrical company at six boys. My dad was the youngest. All six were electricians, so I just kind of grew up in the trades. Of six girls, this is weird. That's some that's some <laughs> crazy collaboration already. So um, also from California, yeah, yeah also from yeah. Orange County yeah. and yeah. San Diego, so a little crossover there. And so that's really like it was just kind of in my blood, right? That I grew up in the industry, and a lot of my family is too. And I went to college. I did construction management. Where'd up, you go to college? Up at BYU. I okay. did construction management. They have a great program up there. And then I moved to Phoenix in 05. What and, brought uh, you to Phoenix? It was opportunity. You know, I had some offers to go back to Orange County specifically. There was a couple offers in Vegas. And look, I, I grew up in San Diego. I lived in Utah for a time. I lived in Indiana for a time. Mm. I 
hate the cold weather. So yes, I did too. not. And in construction, I'm like, I'm not going to work in the snow. Like I had no desire. So I was looking at Texas, Florida, Arizona, Vegas, California, right? Warm mm-hmm, climates. Mm-hmm. Um, and really Phoenix was kind of the best lifestyle mm-hmm. and best opportunity. I wanted to do high-end luxury and custom homes. So really there was kind of a stepping point, but my goal was to do custom. And so came here in 05, worked for a high-end, you know, semi-custom builder, but then kind of got, you know, dream job, if you will. And this kind of goes into one of my core things I always tell people. But 2006, I was hired to do the Omni Model Lucia in Paradise Valley, just Lincoln and Tatum, this incredible, you know, resort. And uh, it, it really was a career making opportunity That's being cool. on $300 million project, you know, developer, bankers, you know, you have a hotel, you mm-hmm. have clients that live at the hotel on the property, mm-hmm. super complex. So just pretty eye opening for three years you know, working on that yeah. project. So that was definitely what catapulted, you know, the start to who we are today. That's super cool. Yeah. Can you tell us, cause you have a family. So tell us about your family, how you met your wife and all of that. It's always good to know. Yeah. I, I probably have a long version on YouTube to not go too much in the, in the weeds on it. But I, like many people, I mean, it's, it's funny cause, uh, before I answer that, what I was going to say was in your career, the reason I went to Mount I was really underpaid right at the time. And so I always tell people chase experience, not money mm. like that. That's a, that, it's a really key to be successful because I was underpaid to be at Mount Lucia, but it was an experience, right? Mm-hmm. That was invaluable and being underpaid put me in a tough position. And so then it becomes financial crisis. So I was actually in the process. Uh, I took my GMAT, I was going back to get my MBA and had a life changing experience where I was married at the time and things, uh, my ex was leaving. And so I became a single dad with three okay. daughters at the time. So pivot to life and mm-hmm. said, okay, well, what do I know? I know construction. So had a former client that believed in me and said, Brad, well, and there's a longer version that I have out there mm-hmm. that I'm sure people could find, but had a former client that saw something to me, invested in me, started AFT. Um, I actually met my wife, Ashley, who I'm married to now, who's a sweetheart. And she's awesome. She's awesome. And so I actually started AFT after we got married and then we've had three. So I have six kids, five girls, one boy. Uh, so life's busy. So. I love it. Yeah, it's busy. So I, you, you got your boy. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And he plays ball too. He does. Yeah. We're getting him there. Summit practice. I love yeah. it. Um, I want to go back to that. So I tell my kids this too. If you're going to go get a job somewhere, um, do it with a purpose. Mm-hmm. Don't just work for a paycheck. And one of my regrets is when I was in high school and college, when I worked for a pizza place or I worked in a retail store, I wish I'd sat down with the guy who owned it Mm -hmm. and at the pizza place, this guy walks in and I had no idea who he was. So I asked my manager who was like two years older than me at the time. I said, who's that? And he goes, Oh, that's the guy who owns this place. And I saw him in a year. I saw him three times. Yeah. And so I'm like, why didn't I sit down with him and ask him, how do I become you so that I can own this business and somebody else can run it for me. And then I can go do the other things that I really want to do. I love that. So it, it's actually really good insight, Ryan, because I think many of us, I mean, there's touch points. You mentioned how we met at basketball and here we are doing a podcast together, right? There's a relationship that's built. All of us are building relationships at some form mm-hmm. and whether we're focused on them or not, but there are touch points, there's contacts, there's things that like trigger. And I remember being in high school and I did cross country and track as you know, I didn't play basketball, but kind of undersized as a kid in high school. But uh, I remember my coach telling me, he's like, and he was big on Brad, it's not what you know, but who you know, right? Mm-hmm. And and it wasn't like in a selfish way. It was just, you're going to meet people. And if you bring value to them, and if yep. you listen to them and you ask questions, and to your point, Ryan, like, I wish, you know, I do that more now. I'm very cognizant of that as I'm mm-hmm. speaking to people, ask them questions and understand because there's so many applications to people that run other businesses and how that impacts my business how then it impacts our company culture, or the leadership we have, the organization, the systems. There's information we can learn. And if we're not asking those questions or taking the time and just going through the nuance of life, like you just miss out on that. Yeah. Well, I remember early when we first met, you were going to walk me through kind of how you go about your social media, which yeah. is so impressive. We still got to do that. We're going to get to that <laughs> yeah. though. But, but that was cool because you were providing value and mm-hmm. I'm not in the construction business, mm-hmm. but it would add value to me. And so therefore, you know, you have a stronger relationship. Yeah. Here's, I a, love that. here's a crazy note though. So all of your social media, is it still basically it's all me, everything? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's all you, right? Yeah. I'm doing all. Yeah. So he, to this day, president <laughs> and CEO, he's never delegated that, but it's also, um, stuff that you guys do. It's your, it's your own work. Yeah, it's all and and work. you never spent a dime in marketing, right? 
Not much. I mean, there's been a couple little things I've done, but overall it is organic. Like, That's so there's, impressive. There's been a couple things we've done, um, which I can speak to specifically, but overall, most of the 3000 posts you see on there are organic. Our and you're work. doing them. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I want to go back to what you were saying about giving value, but receipt you're receiving value, but you're also giving value. I think it's so important. We talk about this all the time and we teach our kids this, right? It's so important who you associate with. And I feel so selfish. I say this too all the time. I feel so selfish with our podcast, but I love it because mm -hmm. I get to talk to really awesome people and get to learn what makes them tick and how mm -hmm. they came to be. I mean, I already wrote a note, right? Of what you said. So I absolutely love that. Well, it's funny because like the podcast is a good avenue, right? You're, you're conversing with other people and your people that listen gain content, right? That's why I started my podcast is that it's only an hour, but the interesting thing, this is kind of ties into social media, LinkedIn. I, I love LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is probably one of the most powerful social media platforms that people are not using Wait, that's what or I've taking heard. advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I've been big on LinkedIn forever. Like, I don't know how much I don't get paid by LinkedIn, but I'm a huge proponent of them. The thing is you, you can expand your network quickly mm -hmm. and organically through LinkedIn, but really going back to the original core, like there are a lot of young builders, right? There are a lot of people that reach out through Instagram and DM or LinkedIn and look, I'm driving, so I'll take windshield time and it's, there's no value. They're not paying me for advice mm -hmm. I'm giving them. But here's the thing, like when you give value to people, like there's a relationship, there's, um, uh, you know, there's a friendship that's being built. And I can tell you that maybe at the time, you know, I may have invested some time there, but on the back end now there's referrals I have from sure. these same people that are like, Hey, I can't do this, but go talk to AFT. Yeah. Like they're the right one. And so we've been blessed. I think any, any time you, you have to plant a lot of seeds in any business For and sure. you can't just pigeonhole yourself in your business and network you have to expand and so there's value to that in the podcast i mean you're going to do that alone mm -hmm. so. there's a couple couple cool principles there so you said blessed and i and i know that you follow the same model that we do and that's that that concept if you do good to others you help other people you serve enough people you're going to be blessed mm -hmm. and so that's why we never really worry about i mean commission financial side commission is important yeah. but it it comes it comes when you take care of people yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a big thing for us. What we do with like our community service and getting involved and <clears throat> giving back is, and we say this all the time that we will show up and serve without any talk of business. Mm -hmm. We don't need to, but it naturally comes. People want to work with you, right? Because you're in that um, relationship building business. And I love that. And I've had so many times where I've had a community event and I'm having a conversation with someone, had no idea if they were thinking of buying or selling. And a few days later they call and they said, Hey, I just enjoyed chatting with you at the movie in the park or mm -hmm. whatever it was. Right. Yeah. So to your point, you never know you're planting seeds, right? But you do it from a good place and it does always come back. There's nothing worse than like a soliciting or persistent salesperson, right? Right. So it's like, and, and I'm a huge believer in that. I think, uh, you know, as, as you, and, and this kind of relates to social media, like when people know us, when they follow me and I tell young people who are doing, or anyone starting on social media, you'll never go on a post and see, call us. Mm -hmm. We're the best. We're top quality. Like I don't like, mm -hmm. you'll never find that in any content I put out there. It's always like, look at this detail check out this project, mm. you know, you're giving credit to those that are installing, you're giving credit to the manufacturers and pointing out these amazing things. You look, quality will speak for itself. The relationship for will sure. speak for itself. And really where that comes down to, like this kind of goes back to some of my core principles, but you know, generosity precedes prosperity, right? So, and you do this, I think you're both a great example because I've known Ryan, I know all the events you're doing. And so when you're generous in the community, in your profession, in the marketplace, that generosity always precedes prosperity, always mm. comes back. I love so. it. That's a great principle. I have to give a, um, what is it um, What is it called that I'm Shout doing? Out. No, a yeah. uh, keynote. Oh, and yeah. at an event coming up and they want me to talk about that. I'm writing that down. Do it. Yeah, generosity okay. precedes prosperity. And, so, but it's true. And, and I'll bring that up. And the only reason I'm bringing it up, I've used this before, but going back to the real estate, when I, my first year out of college, young, poor college kid, young married, I had my first daughter, was about to have my second. And Martin Ona was... So we were working at this like semi-custom community, you know, pretty nice homes mm -hmm. for, uh, by the Chandler airport. And what's interesting is there are a few sales members on the team. There are like four of them. And then they had like 20 of us superintendents, you know, building this big subdivision. And we'd have weekly meetings with our sales team to figure out progress, make yeah. sure other clients are being taken care of and whatnot. And, you know, most of the sales agents, they were still nice. You know, they'd bring like some cold, um, egg McMuffins from McDonald's or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> but Martin would like take us to like the Chandler airport to the hangar cafe. Yes, and he would come that. in with like, at the time it was Paradise Bakery with this yep. huge spread. And I remember being super, I mean, honestly, you're a young call student, just yeah. building your career. And on my birthday, he gives me a handshake with a hundred dollars in it. Mm. Wow. And he was always about generous, generosity precedes prosperity. And the thing that's funny is he was so generous to all of us in little ways and just advice and, um, uh, uplifting quotes and comments and I stuff, but everyone worked so hard for him. Yeah. Right. Everyone they, did. Sure. All they of us did. And wall. we said, if it was Martin Sky, like we're going to do above that. and beyond. So sometimes we don't have to do much, but it's those little, yeah. you know, those little nuggets that we, That's awesome. that we do. So Brad, you've mentioned a couple of times, I think you, I wrote it down. Is it core principles? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause mm -hmm. I feel like you need to share that with yeah. us if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I have a lot. I mean, I could pull out my core value card. It's actually my truck, but we have core <clears throat> principles, core values. So okay. like, so you have a card for your business? I do. Okay. In fact, all my employees have it. They have it memorized. We give them like a little gift when they memorize it because one, one challenging thing is you're building a company is look, I, I have my experience of life, right? From, you know, all of us have our own touch points and experience, right? And what we believe in communication mm -hmm. and how I want AFT, the brand sure. to be. That's why I still run the social media because I know the content I want to yeah. put out there. But as you hire, like everyone that hire, we have 28 employees now. They're on extension of me to some mm -hmm. extent. And so core values are really important. We have 11. And the people we hire and how they communicate day to day, their responsiveness, how they treat others, how they treat our trades and our clients, like they have to believe in that. So like our number one is like be a good steward of our client's investment. We're building high-end luxury homes it's really easy for things to get sideways. We have to protect our client, right? We have to embrace continuing education. We have to embrace technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we're using QR codes in our house. We're trying to be one of the most advanced builders from all the technology we're using and from building science. You know, we did the national home of the year. So, uh, so all these things come down and we all believe, believe in it. And so my core principles, I share with them in addition to like the generosity precedes prosperity and these little nuggets, like I talked about a little, personal experience I had in 2011 where I was at a turning point in my life where I'm single dad, you know, my ex is going to California and what do I do? Mm. And, you know, it goes back to that when you're having failure in your life, you keep your head up, yeah. right? And when you have success, you keep your head down. Mm -hmm. And so it's really easy when you're successful to let that get to you, but it should never, you got to keep your head down and keep I love that. Finding different avenues, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you're when you're having failure in your life, keep your head up. So I try to, you know, today's our production meeting later today with my team. So we have those once or twice a month. And we're always going to go over one of the team members today will give the core value. And they're going to speak about it for five to ten minutes today. So Yeah, I'd love, love to see your card. Yeah, I, I have it. In fact, okay. I, I should grab it after this meeting yeah. to show you how okay. we do it. But. That's cool. I think it's cool to have those because it's like a, a gauge or like a boundary, right, on who you are. And it can help when you get into a sticky situation of like, okay, how do I handle this? And then you have that to fall back on. And I love that, right? Sometimes we can let emotion dictate our actions. But when you have those core principles that you stand by, it's like a check, right? A good check and balance of what you do. And then it's also how you show up for your clients to say, this is what you can expect from us, which mm -hmm. I think is super important too. Yeah. And it goes to the value. I mean, you're both providing a ton of value. It may mm -hmm. not lead to financial on everything that you're doing, you know, in, in the realty business, you, but if you're keeping a great name and reputation, like it always pays itself back. And the same thing for builders, like it's just to your point, you have to have an SOP, right? Standard operating procedures mm -hmm. that people understand. And mm -hmm. so that when there is crisis, when mm -hmm. there is problems and adversity, mm -hmm. You know, what's our response? How do we move forward? And, you know, I what's the that. core value? Yeah. I think it's important to have that in business. I think it's important to have it personally, right? Professionally and all those aspects. I'm trying to teach my kids that. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard. Me too. <laughs> I always said in my podcast to the kids, you got to listen to this. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Only so, they would learn. So I want you to get to differentiating factors about your business that help you stand out in the marketplace. But I, I'll kind of segue into this because I remember in one of our many conversations, I just overheard you say something about how your job site is always clean. Yeah, mm -hmm. that and that's too. so, I mean, it's so rare because we go to new builds and oh I gosh. built a new house recently and it's a hot mess. I mean, even after our house was done, we had debris from all the houses down the street when Coming the wind was blowing yard. every day for months and months. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that stuff. Yeah, I think, uh, it's, I don't want to say low hanging fruit, but to your point, construction just kind of wild, wild west, right? <laughs> and it's just poor communication, poor systems. It's like, I always say the dinosaur, cause it's like, we're the slowest moving industry mm -hmm. to adapt to technology. 
quick lesson about that. So 2000, probably 14, a year after I started my company. I mean, again, early on, right? I'm in the field. I'm a superintendent. So I'm owner of the company, but I'm out there running a job. And I did a project in North Phoenix and awesome client. I mean, we got along great and remodel turned out amazing. And after he's like, Brad, can I take you to lunch? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we go to lunch and he, he was a retired builder. And so he's like, you know, Brad. And at the time I was probably, you know, like 31 or something. And he's like, you know, communication, amazing, right? Like schedule, awesome quality, top notch one issue, like the cleanliness, like, mm. and he's like, you were, you were pretty clean, but you know, guys would like clean their paint bucket, you know, in my host bib and then like some debris got in my rocks and, you know, you were cutting trim carpentry and cabinetry in my driveway, didn't clean it up. And, you know, just some little things. He said, you know what, if you really want to separate yourself, like keep your site clean. And it was like, bam, nice. you know, so doing like an autopsy of the build. And so from that point I said, this is going to be like one of our core values, yeah. our core principles. And it's in, you know, that we keep sites clean. And so that's the reputation we have in town. Yeah. People walk our job sites and they're like, I've never seen anything so clean. Yeah. So we did, going back to social media, there was a post I did probably seven years ago. And the house had just been framed. And we have big roller magnets on all of our jobs. And so the super's oh, out there cool. doing the roller magnet yeah. after frame stage, picking, picking up all the screws mm -hmm. and nails and metal. That's right? really cool. We had a bucket there showing all the debris we picked up. Wow. And said, look, to this detail is what we're doing. And I remember putting on social media and it went viral, like LinkedIn, Instagram, yeah. and just go, and people are like, there's an emotional touch point because really to be real successful, to separate you as a brand of any brand is solving pain points or those emotional connections, yeah. right? It's that taking clients on an emotional journey. And I'll give one yeah. example of someone who does that really well. But so if you can take someone on an emotional journey, that's a customer for life. And people would say, I moved in my house and my kids stepped on a nail. Mm. Right. I was doing my landscape and we found all this debris. So if you care about that, we know we care about the stuff we don't see. Right. 100%. Steve Jobs That's is awesome. big about that at yeah. Apple, like yeah. cleaning, you know, making sure water bottles are cleaned up. And so we, we direct the subs, we train them. It's still a lot of work. Uh, but where I bring the emotional journey, there's a, a friend of mine, Brian Harris, who's probably one of the top cosmetic the dentists yeah. Yeah, in, in the country. People yeah. fly all over to, to use Brian Harris. And he, I, when I speak about marketing, I always bring him up because what he does is he'll show his client who doesn't want to smile at a wedding or a birthday party, mm -hmm. has been self-conscious their whole life. And so he shows them buying their plane ticket, flying to Phoenix, mm -hmm. doing their consultation. In his office, he has a sign that says building confidence. I love that. And then he does the veneers and they move on. And then he shows them with this huge smile, Aww. like so happy. Their life's changed. And anyone's looking at that saying, I want that. Right. Yeah. Like I, like emotionally that connects to me that I want to be For part sure. of that. And it's blown up his business. And so I think site cleanliness on a job oh. site is like that for me or for, for sure. our clientele. Well, you made me think about that story and I know, you know what I'm going to talk about, but when they, that's that example of like when you build your own house versus building it for someone else. Right. And the one guy was like, yeah, I'm going to have you build this last house before you're done. Right. Retire. And then he gives him the key. And he was like, if I would have known, right, I would have built it so much better. Mm -hmm. It's that same idea of like how, what, what would you want if it was your own house and treat it accordingly? Yeah. And I love that. The other thing mm -hmm. that I wanted to bring up, cause you went over it so quick, but I think it is such an important point that so many people will miss is the power of those hard conversations. That was mm -hmm. a hard conversation that mm -hmm. that Get gentleman that had with you, yeah. right? Like you're great, but, and the fact that he took the time to share that with you says a lot, I think. And then the fact that you took it the way you did and instead of going the direction of maybe being pissed at him and like, oh, right, right. What the heck is wrong with him? I did all of this and that's what he wants to complain about. No, you really took it to heart and then you went and made it better. Mm -hmm. And I've had people that have spoken to my life that has been so powerful and I know it wasn't an easy conversation with them. So I just think that's an important point that I don't want anybody to miss. The power sometimes of having hard conversations. Mm -hmm. It's funny you bring that up because so today's production meeting we're going to have, uh -huh. I'm going to address this specifically because rewind what teed that up is now 2008, I'm at the Mono Lucia working. And, you know, one of the head framers who ran the whole framing division, there's this massive project, right? He comes to me and he's like, Brad, you have pretty thin skin, right? And I was super offended. Oh. And then I'm like, oh, wait, he just said I have thin skin and I'm offended. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, there's an oxymoron, right? <laughs> right mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, point made, right? <laughs> and so that, that was a turning point in my life mm -hmm. at a young age in my early 20s to say, uh, 
can I have hard conversations? Mm-hmm. Can I take criticism? Right. And sometimes some of my team members can. We're going to address that today and give that personal, vulnerable experience. Yep. But, you know, I look at that now that not only did this client pull me aside, and I've had clients have these hard conversations with me about, hey, Brad, you can do X and Y. And, you know, you can pivot, you can mm-hmm. address it, and now you can take that information and make it better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've even had, you know, we know that there are, lack of a better word, maybe trolls on social media, but there's still people that know what they're doing too. Like we, we were doing this integrated gutter at this house in Scottsdale and this guy from New York's like, Hey Brad, you need to, you're not do this detail. Like oh. it's going to fail. Oh. It will fail. And I called him up. Mm-hmm. He's a huge litigator consultant. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. The architect and engineer spec it. Still, it's going to fall down to me at the end of the day what would you do? And so he walked me through that. So I think it's really important that there is a value social media to say, Hey, I have other people that have been doing this and may say, here's a better way. A client that may say, here's a better way. Yeah. Adapt Mm -hmm. that and improve. Yeah. I love that. Well, being open to the feedback and then how you take it. Right. And sometimes when we get those, it's so funny. I was telling these guys, I felt like I had arrived at a whole new level when I got haters on social media. I was like, (laughs) this is like a whole new, like I actually wear it as a badge of honor, right? Like that someone would say something critical, but then how do you handle it? Mm Because I think that's equally as important. Right. And others see that. And so Um, just being intentional with that. And I've responded occasionally and I get so many people that will chime in. And I was just telling these guys the other day, like when you get a hater for hanging a door hanger on your door or Mm -hmm. something and they're Mm -hmm. mad that they have to throw it away, which we know you're going to throw it away. Um, But they get so mad about it. And I'm like, you know, I can respond one of two ways. I can respond at their level and be frustrated and meet them where they're at and just say, really, like you want to complain about this? Or I can just apologize and just own it and just Mm -hmm. say, no, sorry, didn't mean to uh, inconvenience you. Like, we'll make sure we don't do it again, whatever. Right. And I think the way that we choose to handle it will say so much and then move on. Yeah. It's like, again, I I know I have these taglines, which probably get old, but you know, it's like, don't confuse my kindness with weakness. Like Mm. you can still be kind, but you can still be firm and, you know, having that experience and knowledge, like you can be Mm -hmm. direct, but, um, but at the same time, like you don't have to meet stoop to their level. Exactly. For Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. So you've shared, and we were kind of talking about this. Oh, well, I want to ask you this before I ask you my next question. What do you think of, what is it called? Like printable houses or printable like 3D, 3D houses? Yes, yeah. 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 What, are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, it's a great product. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, one of the architects I work with has been doing some of that at the forefront. So uh, you, it's just like anything. Like there's, there's going to be a need for affordable housing. Like the market is not conducive to affordable housing and it's mm-hmm. not going to be for a long time. Mm-hmm. And with material and labor, labor shortage is a huge problem mm-hmm. and it's going to be a problem for the next 20, 30 years until we can re-educate and I don't want to go off topic too much, but, but we need I to get people though. back in the trades. Yes, like, I love trade it. Trade school's gone. Yes. There's this understanding that you have to go to college to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I'm at the forefront saying, no, you don't. I mean, I did college, but I'm a general contractor. But if you want to go be a plumber or electrician or mechanical framer, yes. there is so much opportunity. Go to trade school. Get in yeah. your career. Yeah. Like I, I have a friend who's a plumber. He's a multimillionaire. Yeah. And they're all doing better than anyone right? else. Yep. And Elon Musk talks about, I mean, yes. everyone talks about like, we don't have builders, we don't have engineers, yes. like that's the value. So like my young nieces and nephews, I'm like, go do this. Yes. You will do really well in life. I love it. Uh, There's but, such a generation of our kids. My So mine are 18, 16, and 11. Mm-hmm. And my little 11 year old like talks all the time. He wants to be like a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. And he like wants yeah. to record these videos. And I'm Sounds like, buddy, like some of my kids this is them. not like yeah. a path that you should be aspiring to. But, I get that but, there's but some, but that, some of them kill it, right? That kill some it. Do. But like, I mean, come Mr. On. Beast, yeah. like, <laughs> let's focus on these skills. Right. I wish there was more of a focus on that though, in our education system of like teaching and exposing them to that. Like when I was in high school, I don't know if this was how it was for you guys, but like we had a, um, a, like a car mechanics class, like mm-hmm. where they could literally yeah. work on cars and stuff. Yeah. Like they don't have that. Shop. They don't have any more. Yeah. yeah. They don't have shop, shop anymore. Home, home wood sh- wood yeah. What is that? Like wood? we like, wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Make cabinets and trim and other yes. things. Yeah. So, so to that point, to your answer is that like, there has to be creative ways. So like 3d printing, you know, there's some drawbacks. I mean, you're using expensive material, like concrete's expensive. It's not reusable once it's poured. I mean, mm. 
it's it's there unless you demo it and then it's not really you can't really recycle it. I mean, Interesting. But but at the core, you can build quickly mm-hmm. affordable homes. So it's great. Ha- Habitat for Humanity is doing some stuff, and I there's like some that. some options there um, for the product that we're doing. Like it's not really feasible. However, what's interesting about America and this again, this is like you go you go to Europe and there are a lot of efficiencies in Europe. You know, we're pretty wasteful here, mm-hmm. and so. It'd be ideal even from wood framing that we could do some things pre-assembled. Even on big custom homes, you could do that in the shop where you're controlling waste and material and nails and you know the exact count and you can ship it out. And instead of framing a house in three months, you know mm-hmm. you can frame a house in a week. You know, there's some costs and we need some manufacturers on board. So there's there's some work we have to do mm-hmm. along that to get in line with like other parts of the country. They're a little bit more advanced as far as building goes. But um, but to your point, it's like this is where we can educate. I think social media has been great because there's – a lot of young professionals that have followed our platform for 10 years. So like my countertop guy, my garage door guy, they're young and they have successful business and they do our work. So mm. there are young people coming to the trades. We just have to continue to educate them on it. So. so what do you do? So speaking of social media, like what are some of the guiding principles that you use with your social media account? Like how do you like, yeah, what do you do? I, I think. Do you it, have a system for I, it? Yeah, I guess the easiest way to answer that, because every industry is going to be different, but it goes back to the value. Like you want to establish yourself as a thought leader or bring value. If you're bringing value, education, thought leadership, you're going to have success on those platforms. And it doesn't matter what you do. You know, mm-hmm. so our content is mixed. Like people will go follow us. I mean, we have content that shows the beautiful product we're putting in, you know, these amazing tours and houses. And then we have other ones that are strictly dedicated to construction knowledge. You go on my YouTube channel, which crosses over to my social media, and it's all education, right? We're talking about building science and net zero homes and ICF, which is insulated concrete form and these other ways to build. You know, we, a standard for us, we're doing like a stego mat. So we're doing like a vapor barrier, which means, you know, you prevent vapor, water, Mm -hmm. termites from coming underneath. Mm -hmm. We have subterranean termites here. Mm -hmm. A lot of builders don't do a vapor barrier underneath their slab when they're pouring the foundation. So, I mean, there's just educational things. And what I find going back to the social media and this kind of, you know, my podcast, the social media all ties into like our brand in the sense that when clients come to me, they know, okay, Brad, we need an architect. We need a designer. I'm passionate about X, Y, and Z because you've spoke about, I want that in my house. So they're coming very educated because they've done their research. They've listened. And really the clients that were, you know, our ideal client that we're advertising to, we know that demographic, we know who that ideal client is and that's who I'm advertising to. So there's, there's a hybrid of understanding your ideal client, being a thought leader, bringing value, and then, you know, it will build. Okay. And more importantly, it's being consistent too. I think mm-hmm. I posted every day for seven years okay. or eight years. So. On five? More or less. So let's see in Google... TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, yeah, six. Uh, Are six. you showing up personally a lot of in a lot of that? Yeah, it's a really good question. So early on, like it was a lot of Brad Levitt out there, and there was a lot of stuff I was doing, and there's still some of that. But like this year, 2024, for YouTube specifically, uh, my video guy who I'm meeting with tomorrow, he I'm not on YouTube this mm-hmm. whole year. Like every, it'll be my team. So he goes to all my projects and all my team are doing mm-hmm. the YouTube videos. So a lot of them have had to get used to being behind the camera because mm-hmm. yeah. it's a little bit the first time is, they've gone better, but they've been great because it's really about everybody. It's not me. Like we're a big company now and it's not just Brad Levitt. It's, it's everybody. And I want them to have FaceTime. For like sure. this morning before the podcast, I was at one of our projects with, um, you know, an investor and he saw the super and he's like, I recognize you because you've been on the videos mm-hmm. and stuff. So I love that part. Yeah, you know, that's good sure. to build them. And with us expanding, I mean, yeah. it's really important. And it helps you replace yourself at some point. Yeah. And that's, that's the goal. And we have great people. And so the only, we're excited news when we build in our own house. Like, yeah. so it's the first time we've built and it's going to be like a model home for AFT. Okay. And so, so I bet there's going to be some super cool things in there. Cool things. I bet. Yeah. We're going to like share sure, maybe yeah. one. I wonder, I've, I've been wondering why it's taking you this long to do it. Yeah. So it's just, you're building the company, right? And we yeah. have some other ventures I could talk about, but so we've been building, you know, I've been, it, for me, it's about the people like I'm, and my people know that that's why I feel we're pretty unique that we don't have turnover. Like they come and stay. Cause we just have a really unique brand family at AFT. I love and that. so we have people for life, which is awesome. But uh, so I've been invested in them and, you know, building that. Um, but really what going back to the house is that I'll be on YouTube just for my house going through these technical details. So mm-hmm. to your point, 
you know, we've done net zero product and net zero means a house that produces as much energy as it consumes. Oh. So it's off the grid. Okay. That's awesome. Now you can have utilities tied in still, uh -huh. you know, but really day to day it's wow. operating independently. And that's due to construction technology as far as, you know, triple pane windows or wow. insulating the solar power, insulating the yes, foundation. So our house is going to be... As you go into net zero, one thing that you won't see really on any houses that I know of is that you will see this. So we do a lot of homes ICF. So the exterior walls are made out of concrete and foam. Mm -hmm. which, I've seen that. Yeah. So our entire house, two-story house will be concrete and foam. So it has a huge R value. Because of the height limit and we want tall ceilings, first and second floor, the entire first to second floor is steel deck. So wow. it's all steel. So we're doing all structural steel yeah. with concrete. And then all my interior walls will be what we call LSL, which is like engineered lumber. And so all the walls are like perfectly straight. Like mm. Wow. I heard straight. that was like almost impossible. I've always just heard that that's like no, essentially you, impossible. And that's the problem. If you use LSL, like mm -hmm. engineered lumber, mm -hmm. or you use uh, like cold steel, like metal framing, which you do in commercial a lot. Mm -hmm. And we've done that in residential. Like I have a project in Fountain Hills that'll be all metal framing into your mm -hmm. walls. It's laser straight. So wow. everything in the house will be laser straight. And then, you know, there's some other fun things we're doing, but from, a, you know, we're insulating the foundation and we're doing some pretty Why technical insulate buildings. the foundation? I have to ask. Yeah, because even in Arizona, like you, you're, you know, we're not in a freeze climate, but still we're trying to create a true envelope okay. of like a Yeti cooler. So it's yeah. going to be fully insulated. And that's how we get the energy efficiency. And my wife likes it cold, so now she can keep it oh, cold. Man. And it won't cost us anything because the solar offsets it. So That's I awesome. I wish my wife liked it cold because it's not. <laughs> I'm she like does that. It? No. Yeah, no, not me. So have you started? Uh, so we actually just, as I walked in, the architects, we had the red lines come back. There are only a couple. Mostly we're trying to do two uh, SES, like two electrical panels, mm -hmm. because of how the power and, uh, you know, one thing along that is we're doing all Ketra mm -hmm. lighting, which is part of Lutron. So Lutron, Lutron, Lutron Ketra. And then we're also going to do something called rose water in there. So when rose water, think of it like it conditions energy. So what happens in a house, like any, any office house, if you were to like test all these outlets, mm -hmm. you know, you may have 120, mm -hmm. 70, mm -hmm. 50, 140, like it's just spiking mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And then when there's these power surges, like zap, like mm -hmm. power goes out. So what a rose water does, it's essentially the, the power from the city comes into this machine mm -hmm. and it conditions it. So mm -hmm. it sends out exactly uniform energy throughout the whole house. So if you go check every outlet, it's going to be 120 uniform wow. Wow. all the time. Wow. It never fluctuates. You know, if there's an outage, it kicks on and everything's running. And so, you know, your solar and battery backups in this unit so that everything's uniform mm -hmm. So as technology, see, the problem is a lot of the homes you do have so much technology mm. that it's really bad when power goes out. Right. If clients have wine cellars or yeah. high-end luxury appliances yep. or, you know, some of the servers and data backup, like it's really bad for those. So if you can keep power conditioned and then you can have battery backup while you're solving that. So we're going to be doing that in our house just as a, so that's kind of that's some crazy. So, stuff, so. so we submitted for permit and we're going to break ground. We're going to have a groundbreaking with our team and three weeks and then we're officially in break ground first week of May and Gilbert Gilbert in okay. landmark Somerset yeah sweet we're pretty good here right with um permitting getting yeah. that back right away I've heard like California can be forever but California's here we're nightmare pretty, Washington right? state's a nightmare right? but we're pretty good here yeah it's not bad like Phoenix or Gilbert specifically so we submitted our permit we got the red lines back in 30 days and they're pretty minor yeah. you know like yeah. you know they feel like they have to find something I'm sure and I have a good architect uh, and we resubmitted today and we'll have it in two weeks, the that's permit. Really so cool. it's really like two good. months. So you'll be able so to walk. A, and, so sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was just say, that's like a reason to, for people to live here and move here and build here and invest you here. You need to come to Phoenix. Right? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, okay. but, uh, but yeah, but if even Scottsdale and Paradise Valley, that can yeah. be more difficult. I mean, it's still like yeah. four months. It's not. Well, that's why when people ask us, you know, they're thinking about buying here, investing here. And they ask me like, what do you think? I'm like, I want to own as many homes as I can here. Mm -hmm. I mean, hands down. Well, here's the funny thing is I've, I've been building here almost 20 years, right? I've only had my company for 11. Uh, I've never had clients from the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, mm -hmm. Washington ever. And I have a ton of them. That's interesting. Oh, now you do. Because, okay. you know, yeah. oh, for to sure. them, they're like, well, it's great. Like it may totally. be rainy, but we, yeah. it's cool and it's pretty yeah. moderate. Uh, for a lot of reasons, they're moving here. And yeah. we have so, you know, I, you know, pretty active in the community sense. I'm attending, you know, Greater Phoenix Economic mm -hmm. Council, and we have 
so many businesses moving here. It's, it's insane. In, and the amount of clients that want to be here that are yep. coming for weather, luxury, yep. Yep. lifestyle. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's the place to be. We, we could spend a whole episode. It is. It's the place to be. Yeah. So that tells all of our listeners, um, you need to buy some <laughs> property here. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Well, and it's not, and, and, you know, people are a little like PTSD, like we are from for the sure. recession. Yeah. Uh, that, that was unique. I mean, I've been in the industry for a long time and there's always recessions yes. or yep. that one was subprime mortgages. For I mean, sure. there was a lot of yes. shady Reasons stuff happening. Why, yeah. That we don't Banks, have as today. you know, are yes. so strict. Yes. Like I know how strict they are with my yes. clients. And, and people and have know, so much equity. And I know the housing shortage. Mm -hmm. Like I know what oh we're building gosh, and how yeah. long it takes. Yeah. We're so far behind. Like it's. We yeah. are Phoenix significantly behind. Like millions and millions. Millions. Yeah. Nationally and nationally. Locally. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, Brad, where do you see the future of housing development, um, construction, all of that? Like, what are some things that you would say this is like cutting edge coming soon? Like, where are we going? I think it's going to be uh, more building science. And so you're going to see a lot more um, net zero product. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in California, they're already making that a standard. Canada is a standard. It's going to hit the rest of us pretty soon. So... Mm -hmm building really efficient, healthy homes, mm -hmm. really tight. Um, I think outside of luxury market, you're going to see homes that are very well thought out, smaller, mm -hmm. not, you know, huge homes. So they're going to be smaller homes, maybe, you know, 2,000, 2,500 square feet. And then something- Why do you say that? Well, it's because cost. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and you're seeing that like, I know we have big families, but mm -hmm. that's not super common yeah. like yeah. anymore. Yeah. People have huge families and, um, and so people just- how people live and mm -hmm. date and live their life. I mean, it's, it's different now. Yeah. Like it's just, it is different. And so you're going to see uh, that's been my experience as you're looking at like entry level mm -hmm. stuff. And then, um, a lot of it that we're seeing now, and there's a couple builders that are on the front end of this is they're doing smaller homes, 2,500 square feet, for example. But what they're doing is like 1500 to 2000 main level. And then like an, a guest casita yes, yes. Mm -hmm. at 680 yes. U. Because what's happening is kids are staying at home longer. In multi-generational situations. So I'm seeing a ton where, and I was just talking to a kid at the Apple store, which is so funny. And he's like, well, you know, he's young and he's like, I could probably move out on my own, but I could live in my parents' guest casita and mm. pay less. And then I can kind of get my or, life established. Or a grandparent. Yeah. yeah. Grandparents. So with costs going up, you're going to see either, you know, parents coming back to yeah. live or young kids that are longer to leave the nest yeah. that'll be staying there. So what do you think about those multi? What do you think about tiny homes? Because that seems to be a big thing. Now. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I, you know, tiny homes are tough because they're little. People, they're little, and people need space to yeah. some extent. Like it's hard. I think emotionally, some people have a hard time with that. So yeah. I don't know if that's a huge driver. That's why I say they're going to be more practical. Yeah. You know, like two thousand square feet with a guest casita, where you can have multi. You could rent it out possibly, yeah. or have dual mm -hmm. income or something. I heard this um, stat today, which I was kind of surprised by. I don't know if you guys will be, um, but the average first time home buyer, their age, any guesses on how old they are? 26. 30. 36. Oh my gosh. 36. 36. 36. I figured it'd be in the 30s, wow. but. Mm. 36. Wow. Yeah. So it's hard. That does. Interest That's, rates and costs. It yes. is. Interest rates, cost, and it speaks to what you're saying about f kids staying at home longer, leaving the nest later, all of that stuff. And it's going to continue to happen. And then especially where they can do online school, COVID right. changed that, that they could essentially do college working from home and yeah. stay in a guest casita and yep. have their own space still. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, so we get this question a lot, basements. Mm -hmm. Why aren't there more basements here? That's a really good question. So yeah. here's your answer, how you could tell everyone. So when you're building in the Midwest and cold climates, which you is have where what's I grew up, frost light. So it freezes. Minnesota, mm -hmm. Kansas City, you're digging down already for foundation work, for utilities to get underneath that frost line, oh. or else mm -hmm. the lines freeze. It's not a huge expense to go a few feet further and now make it a basement. So it's essentially bonus square footage because you're already doing that. Mm -hmm. We don't have a frost line here, so there's no frost. So you don't have to dig down. Now you have to take into consideration soils. So if you're building in Scottsdale and up on the bench up there, Desert Mountain, where we do a lot. And it's a mountain. It is so expensive. You're doing rock, hard dig, right. clay, and it's very pricey. We do a ton of basements in the East Valley. The reason being is that, well, we don't have a frost line, so it's more expensive because we don't have a ton of contractors doing underground yeah. work. They're almost unicorns here. Yeah. But you see a lot, and shockingly, there's a lot of custom homes. Like almost all our custom homes in Gilbert have basements hmm. that we do. But this is farmland. So the soil here, the problem with East Valley is it's expansive it soil. Shifts. Yeah. And so if you don't get a good soils report, which we require, and then you're mm -hmm. planning for that, you can have issues. But 
when you think about cost, it's really easy. And this is really important for your listeners. As you're thinking about building, if you want to build the least expensive possible, you're going to go two story, mm-hmm. right? Because on a two story house, your smaller footprint, footprint, smaller, mm-hmm. smaller roof line, mm-hmm. you know, single story is going to expand yeah. all that. So, so two story is the way to go. Great curb appeal. Um, and now with homes built energy efficient, you're not going to mm-hmm. feel that summer heat over the mm-hmm. garage or something like some of these poorly built houses. Single story would be our next best, next best, but that's going to be spread out. So the costs yeah. are more per square foot. Basement is even more because you have to dig all that dirt out, you know, waterproofing, masonry, or concrete walls. And so really at the core of it is that soil type dictates a lot of that in town. And then frost no line. frost line. That's cool. Good. Finally frost. settled. <laughs> I want to ask you, you've shared kind of your core principles with your business and you've shared a little bit of your personal story. What are some, um, Ryan calls them non-negotiables. Yes. What are some principles that you live your daily life by? Like things that you're like, this is, these are things that guide me or that are super important to me. Like, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think there's a lot, I think at the core, I mean, we don't want to, you know, be too busy where we have too many things that we have to do every day. But I find it really important for exercise, yeah. right? I, I exercise a ton and it can come in different ways. So you have to have some way. I think there's a lot of studies done that, you know, being in the gym and training, like there's like benefits mm-hmm. to a lot. Oh, yeah. I actually have gotten in the cold plunge. I cold plunge oh, every day. So hey. I have one and I I'm a big proponent, well. but I'm telling you, it's like from a stress, like I feel, for sure. and if anything else, I know there's a ton of health benefits, but I think mentally, I hate cold. I said I moved here because I hate the cold. I love the heat. And that's why I'm in Arizona. But, but there's something about doing it because like it's doing hard. It because it's hard. Yes. And yes. I keep mine at like 38, 39. And yeah. it's really Ooh, hard for me. Tough. That's, that's tough. That's a good one. Yeah. And so I feel it. And I'm, so like. I'm at 55 in Oh, the pool, no, mine's 39. Yeah. Good for and you. It's, it's tough. And so I know that by doing that, like if you can do hard things. Mm-hmm. And, and yes. this kind of goes back to the core that. If you do hard things, your life will be easy. Mm-hmm. If you do yep. easy things, your yes. life's hard. Oh, and so preach it. I think, you know, family is really important. I have six kids, five daughters. So spending time with them, date night with my wife, um, you know, being there for my team. I, I think there's a few things. But on the day to day, it's definitely, you know, keeping keeping your personal health and yeah. You know, I'm pulled a lot of different ways. So I have to make sure yeah. that I'm yeah. active and well, most most healthy. executives that I've ever known in corporate America are pretty fit. And it's because they're doing something that allows them to be competitive mm-hmm. in whether it's trail running on mountains or Ironman competitions or cycling, whatever, you know? So that fitness is really important. I'm, I'm curious, most successful people will probably say, or I would say do say that they win their day in the first couple hours mm-hmm. when they get up. So what's your morning look like? Yeah. So every day, I mean, I'm <clears throat> up early and what time? I'm, well, I'm typically up by five o'clock every day. Okay. Sometimes earlier, but always by five. I mean, I've just, you know, we played early morning yeah. basketball, but being in construction, I'm up early. So I always try to stay ahead of it. So, you know, getting through emails and texts, get my, my social media, getting that posted for the day, getting gym done for the day. And then, you know, I'm free to go attack the day. So that morning is definitely social media, kids yeah. ready for school, you know, getting through my first wave of emails and my teams that are out in the field and then exercise. Mm-hmm. There is something cool about getting a head start on your day before everyone else is. You feel like you're already winning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this was awesome, Brad. We love to do at the end of our podcast, like a little speed round. So are you up for it? Do it. Okay. Favorite color? Uh, Blue. Favorite food? Uh, Mexican. Of course. Yeah. Favorite movie? Oh, man. I'm not very fast. Um, (laughs) Most impactful, maybe. Uh, that makes I mean, there's it so even many. harder. As a kid, I love Braveheart. I'll say Braveheart. Oh, I love, Braveheart. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Favorite sound? Uh, sound would be um, quiet. <laughs> yeah, I'm, silence. I mean, I have six kids and a, my phone's ringing all the day, so I love... Oh, and construction sites are probably really loud, too. You're, I the, you're the first I know person to say that, actually. That's but good. the funny thing is, like, I'm, I think most extroverts, like, mm. I'm extrovert, need introvert time. So like I, I, Sweet. I'm down where I could just sit in my truck 100%. and eat a meal and just sit there. Yes. Right. I yes. hundred percent. So. Uh, favorite book. Um, I love good to great. Oh, mm. yeah. Okay. Jim Collins. Yeah. Jim Collins. Yeah. Favorite podcast. Uh, the AFT construction. No, I was going to say besides no. yours. <laughs> um, actually that's a good question. I listen to Joe Rogan. Okay. I like Joe Rogan a lot. Yeah. Okay. He's a good podcast. Um, last but not least, favorite vacation you've ever taken. taken oh yeah. Europe. Taken, taken. Yeah. Switzerland. 
Yeah. So, so we, we're, we're actually, my wife and I are going to Paris in two weeks nice. in Amsterdam, but we try to get to Europe. We, we, I think the last 10 years we go every year to Hawaii. So we love Hawaii too. We just yeah. go back from Kauai. What so. island? Uh, we, we've done all of them, Yeah. but we just spent two weeks in Kauai. Oh, yeah. Nice. Kauai is probably our favorite, but is we it? love them all. Yeah. The untouched? That's the only one I haven't been to. Kauai's and awesome. It's like yeah. very mellow, right? It's like, yeah, super. Not ton to that's do. why I like it. Yeah. You can go I bet. on, like we were there for spring break and it was awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, thanks, Brad. Well, How, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? So uh, Brad Lovett on LinkedIn, they can go search AFT underscore construction on all of our platforms. I'm sure if they just search Brad Levitt, uh, they'll find us www.aftconstruction.com is our website and podcast is Brad Levitt Podcast. So. Yeah. And if you want to see some amazing homes, check that out. It's, it's pretty cool. Got some awesome clients. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Thanks for listening to The Real Deal, where real estate meets real life. Make sure to follow or subscribe to the home selling team on YouTube, Instagram, and Spotify to stay up to date with our podcast.